Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Between Two Friends. Today we have with us a, I would say a longtime friend, somebody who we've known I think now 10 years. Um, her name is Gisela de Armas and she is the owner of Homestead Senior Care in Miami and a, a female entrepreneur. This is um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's October and what we're trying to do is is highlight and talk about awesome female entrepreneurs. And we have one with us today. It's your 20 year anniversary. That's a huge accomplishment. Yes, 20 years has been a long road and uh, started uh, very scared in a very small office and uh, learned a lot along the way. Um, I did not have a home care background. I had more of a business background, worked a lot for different family businesses and was just uh, wanted to have my own, my own, have that entrepreneurial spirit. And I found Home Instead Senior Care. Yeah, how did you find Home Instead Senior Care? At that time, I used to go a lot to uh, the bookstore and buy Entrepreneur Magazine because I wanted, I wanted my own business. I just didn't know what I wanted. Um, and I found Home Instead Senior Care in uh, the top list of Entrepreneur Magazine. So after I, I did that, um, I, I got in touch with them and I bought myself a book on how to buy a franchise and uh, read through the book and uh, saw some questions that I needed to ask some uh, uh, franchisees that happened to be one in Coral Springs where I live. Uh, and I interviewed the one in Coral Springs and interviewed the one in Lakewood. Then after that was when I got in touch with Home Instead Senior Care. And after that, the rest is history. That is awesome. So congratulations on your 20 years. That's just amazing. And um, I think what's cool about that story is forget education, right? Forget where we go to high school and where we go to college. Anybody can pick up books or now go online to YouTube or just, or just start educating themselves. You didn't educate yourself on how to be the best home care person, you were seeking education on what the next entrepreneurial move for you should be. And then you went deeper and deeper and you made a decision and here you are. And I think that's the, the part that people miss because, you know, that that is available for so many people in this country, especially. Absolutely. Um, there was a, I had an inspirational sign that uh, I found in one of my previous jobs. Um, and, and it was the American engine and how to follow that dream. And I kept that. As a matter of fact, when I finally bought my franchise, my husband had it um, framed for me. And I think I sent it to, to one of your assistants so that uh, they can see it because that was, that was my inspiration. And uh, I really didn't know what I was going to get into. You know, I just wanted to do something with passion. I wanted to do something. I wanted to help people. I wanted to make money, of course, we all need to make money. Um, but it's been a wonderful 20 years of learning, of learning, you know, uh, Miami's a difficult market. Yeah. And we've often been beaten by our Miami market. But, um, you know, you get beaten and you pick up the pieces and you get up again and tomorrow's another day. Now, of course, uh, your younger brother, Gabriel, yeah. is, is one of my best friends in the world. Yeah. And um, he has been at Home Instead with you for a number of years. I can't remember off the top of my head, were, were you born here or were I you born, born in Cuba? Cuba? I was born in Cuba. And that's another beautiful story because we come from immigrant, you know, now with immigration, there's so much talk and, and so much, uh, I don't know, so many different opinions. Um, my parents came in 1969 uh, from Cuba and we immigrated here. We were claimed with the family, um, uh, procedure where you would be able to claim immediate family members. So my father had a brother who moved here in the 50s and he was able to claim my father. Of course, we had to go to the process. My father was then taken away to work in the sugar field till we got our visa. So we would, I remember as a little girl, I was seven years old when I came to this country and uh, going to see him on the train to see my dad and then come back home. We finally got our visa, got on that plane, um, came to Florida. Um, from Florida, we were transferred then to New Jersey and all my dad wanted to do was work. He wanted 
to work. You never wanted Medicare or Medicaid, you wanted work. They were factory workers in, in, um, in New Jersey. And uh, the rest is history. Gabriel wanted me to, of course, elaborate on my history with him because I was an only child at that time. <laughs> and I would beg for a brother and I wanted a brother. And of course, my mother was elderly. At that time, when you were 43, you weren't having children. Nowadays, those things have changed. But she did happen to get pregnant with my dear brother. So I always tell him that that was my plan. That was my marketing plan. <laughs> <laughs> I needed a marketer. So when I started the business, I started by myself. Uh, it was quite a, it, it was, it was rough. You know, you, you make a decision, you leave your job, a well-paying job. And then you, you know, you go and you look for an office and then you say to yourself, what, you know, what do I do? You know, and uh, I had a small 400 square foot office. Reminds me of when I met you. Mm -hmm. uh, and I went to see you at your office that you were helping us out. And then little by, then I, I realized that he was just perfect and uh, for my team. I think more often than not, family and friends that go into business together, it ends up going very poorly. What I have found in my experience is a very clear cut um, communication regarding roles and responsibilities. Absolutely. Like, I'm going to, uh, you know, you're going to do this, I'm going to do this, and we're both going to contribute in this way. Just because we're brother and sister doesn't mean you have to be a good team. And many times I've been asked, how can you guys do it? You know, how do you do it? And in order to have a family business and be able to work with a family member, uh, first and first, you know, the first thing you have to have is respect. You have to respect one another and you have to respect each other's roles because if you don't have that, you're not going to succeed. Um, how old were you when Gabe was born? I was 13 years old. He was 13. my baby. He's still my baby. Yeah, he's still. So, so there you are praying and, and your 43 year old mother must have been like, you know, how good are your prayers? <laughs> how am I pregnant at 43 years but old? They were so happy because, um, my mother had lost a son in Cuba to leukemia at the age of 15. So when she got pregnant, you know, back in those days, you never knew the, the, you know, if you were having a boy or a girl. So I was, I was telling Gabe just the other day that when my, when he was born, I remember standing there at 13 with my dad and looking at this baby boy. And uh, so, so he was a gift. He was a gift. Yeah. That's really, really special. You, you, what you have here is a family owned business, a, a woman owned business and a minority owned business. Yes. And I, I didn't want to gloss over, over the fact that you came here when you were seven because, um, Maybe you can answer this, but the immig immigrant community are phenomenal entrepreneurs. Yes. So many great entrepreneurs in this country are immigrants. And um, I know a guy from uh, Serbia who he just like swears by the United States. You know, he's, he's built a multi, multi, multi million dollar business, several of them. And, and he's just like, you know, don't say bad things about this country. Like this country provides so many incredible opportunities that just aren't available elsewhere. But there must be something, you know, for 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 people traveling here um, to say, like, man, I'm I'm gonna go for this opportunity that's in front of me. And for for whatever reason, I, you know, I I think, you know, people not born in this country are oftentimes the best entrepreneurs. And that is correct you realize that you have been given an opportunity um, that you can have nowhere else. And I am very proud to be a Cuban American and uh, to see how hard, you, you know, your work pays off, your work pays off. And um, you just have to, to have that, that will to continue and never give up and you will get to your goal. How big is the franchise? How many franchisees? A, and... I think there's about over 600. So it's about 643 or 648 within the United States. You know, a franchise gives you support. It gives you marketing, gives you recognition. On the other hand, you know, you pay, you know, fees out of, out of what you earn. So, you know, what, what, what are your thoughts? You sign for another 10 years. You obviously en enjoy the model. And right now, in fact, um, a lot of a lot of immigrants are getting into franchising because to get the investor visa, you have to spend a certain amount. And just instead of starting your own business, buying into a franchise is one of, of the the more straightforward ways to go. So we're kind of seeing an uptick in that. But what's your thought about you know just franchise well, in general? The most important thing is to do your research. 
before you get into a franchise, and it's got to be the right franchise. I was fortunate enough. Um, I think that uh, Homestead was started in 1994, I want to say. So when I bought in 2000, they were only six years in, and it's changed dramatically. Oh, yeah. It's grown incredibly. Um, but it's got to be the right franchise. I, I, many times I was asked, why are you going into a franchise? And I was like, well, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. So I knew I wanted a business. I just did not know what I was going to get into. And as I said, I went into uh, the bookstore, would buy Entrepreneur Magazine. At one point, I wanted to buy a ice cream shop. And my husband said, really? Uh, do you want to grow or you want to be a ha behind a counter going one scoop or two? <laughs> So needless to say, that was the, one of the best advice I got. Uh, and, and I must say that I am very happy to be a Homestead Senior Care franchise. I get support. I get uh, the best marketing materials. Um, and a lot of things, uh, one advice that I wanted to give to people that go into franchises is use what they give you. I happened in the first few years, I would not call my regional if I was having a problem. I would try to figure it out on my own because I did not want them to think less of me. I, I'm one of those people. I want to figure it out. Right. And that's not what a franchise is meant to be. A franchise is to give you support, to be able to take that phone and call anybody that you need to talk to to help you solve your problem. Or you want to start a new program and you want to do something different. All you have to do is ask your regional who's doing it and you can call somebody who's already done it. The, the resources that a franchise can provide you are incredible. Um, I don't think people leverage those enough, especially when looking into franchise. So as you said, not all franchises are created equally. We, we at, at Trembley Law Firm, we help people start franchises or buy into a franchise or sell their franchise. And unfortunately, we end up doing quite a bit of franchise litigation. So we know the franchises that are great to work with that provide the right amount of support, the regional support, the direct level, you know, that have resources. And then there are the franchises who just try to franchise because they think it's a way to make money. And then there's just nothing like I sold you something, pay me your fees and I'm not okay. going to give you any help. And well, they sell you something where you're very limited. You know, most franchises are by region or by zip code. Yeah. So you have to be very careful. How big is your territory? Mm -hmm. Because if you're unaware that that's what you're buying. You think you're just buying a name and you are going to be able to promote this name within the community. But there's restrictions so you have to be very careful and i always tell everyone look for an attorney and look for a franchise attorney because i had my documents reviewed back then um i didn't know you but i went ahead and i found myself a franchise lawyer because i wanted him to look at the documents and to give me guidance back in 2000 i i wasn't even a lawyer yet so <laughs> <laughs> franchising is actually still pretty new it's, it's within the past 30 to 40 years that the model has, has really exploded. And of course, when something explodes, you have your exploiters. You still have to buy physical space and then you're in charge of the build out and that's way you know more expenses. Uh, did you call the other franchise owners in your area? Oh, they won't allow me to. Well, you know, that's probably a pretty bad sign. Yes. So it, I think it, that's it, one of the best points you just made is that if you're gonna buy a franchise, you should speak to a couple of owners and not from your, just your region. You want to spread it out. You want to see what, how, how does the franchisee feel about the franchisor, you know? And, um, and, and uh, you made a very good point. The agreement that I signed in my first year in 2000 was a very small agreement. Uh, now it's five times what mm -hmm. it was, uh, you know, with all, because they learn as you, we learn, they learn as franchisors and they know that they need in order to have a quality franchise they need to have to have quality owners yeah so they need to protect themselves so yep. you have to find a way to protect yourself also yeah and that's why you need a lawyer <laughs> <laughs> exactly and and why you need a business plan because we've we've seen franchises that just on the paper when you start doing math you almost have no ability to make more money than you were just working from someone else and and so many you've got these these guys running around with their trucks painted you know franchise now they're franchise consultants or they're getting paid under the table to direct you to work with certain you know lawyers or firms and it, it can be a dirty world but i don't want to muddy the whole thing because because the concept is no, good and, and get into a good franchise 
a reputable yep. franchise, but like I yep. said, it's up to you. They're going to sell your product. It's mm-hmm. up to you to be able to surround yourself with the right people uh, and not just go, you know, find a, a broker who's, oh, I want to buy a franchise. No, you have to do the legwork um, and talk to people. Because you're signing a five to 10 year deal and the amount of research that, that you should put into it, I would say 99% of people don't do that. And as a franchisor, I want people to ask questions because I want to give them the information that will show that I'm a better franchise than someone else they're considering. Absolutely. And you want to make sure also, remember, when you buy a franchise, it's your business, but it's really not your business. Yeah. So, you know, you are accountable to a franchisor. Um, Mm -hmm. And they can tell you, thank God Home Instead is not one of those franchises that tell you every step of the way what you need to do. They do have standards and they'll come and check on your standards of things that they want you to do, which is a good thing because that protects your your price possession, which is your business. You don't want somebody else down the road in Broward County doing things that they shouldn't be doing because that, that's going to reflect upon us. Yep. So that's a good thing. Getting back to the personal side, let me ask you three rapid fire questions for you. Okay. So are you, are you ready? I'm ready. Tell us your best piece of advice for new entrepreneurs. Don't be afraid to ask for help. I didn't do that. And I think it's important, you know, um, because you will rise up stronger. Love it. Um, next question. Worst business mistake that you've made and what did you learn from it? Oh boy. Some hires that I've made that I was (laughs) (laughs) from the very beginning, you know, you had that little devil telling you, don't do it, don't do it. But I was desperate. I wanted to solve a problem, you know, and, uh, and they've been painful. They've been painful. Not making that mistake again. I, yeah, with, with hiring you, you, at the end of the day, you got to go with your gut, but you have to also realize that you're gonna make mistakes. You, you may think you have a home run hire, but then about half the time, it's not going to work out and that's okay. The sooner you move on, that's, that's better for both that's of you. That's it. Cut your losses. You know, not everyone's terrible. They just need to find their own right fit and it clearly wasn't with you exactly. and vice versa. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so uh, last question. If I wasn't in lockdown because of coronavirus, I would blink. What would you be doing? I'd be in Turkey right now. That was in our Turkey? <laughs> yes. We <laughs> in Italy last year. Um, thanks to one of my employees that convinced me to go with her on a tour. And we had such a wonderful, wonderful. Uh, we were there for 12 days and it was fabulous. So my plan was to go to Turkey right around this time, as a matter of fact. Okay. But all this craziness started. So needless to say that didn't happen, but that's okay. Wow. Okay. So, so look, um, you know, speaking of the coronavirus and the lockdown, you guys, we didn't really get too much in, into what you guys do, but um, you, you, your employees, right? Home care uh, physicians go into people's homes and now you've got, you know, quarantines and lockdowns. So this must've been a very challenging time for you guys time because uh like all of us it was the unknown of not knowing what to do um many sleepless nights because i i you know you go extreme and oh my god i'm going to lose my employees they're not going to want to work my clients are going to start canceling what are we going to do and we were doing we actually it was going to be our best month uh when corona started we were going to hit a goal that we had not hit before but god bless you know you stay calm every day's a new day and everybody went to work everyone was safe we started establishing protocols for them to go into the homes. Uh, clients, uh, some, you know, delayed the services, but eventually came back. They missed their, their ladies not coming into the home. And actually that goal was then met in June instead of March. Oh, good. Through, because people want to stay at home. Yeah. And, and people trust us. We've been in the community a long time. So yeah. um, we're doing well and our, 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 our employees are safe. And our clients are safe. Thank you guys for continuing to send people into homes to care for the elderly. And um, it's amazing. You know, God bless. Congratulations again on 20 thank years. That's incredible. Keep up the, the wonderful work. And um, thank you for having or thank you for being on this uh, Between Two Friends video podcast with me. It means a lot. I had a lot of fun. And, um, you know, Likewise. Keep, keep going. Best of luck to you guys in the future. You too, Brad. Stay safe. Okay, Gisela. Thank you.